Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to my YouTube channel. So my video about making Snapchat lenses with that are blushes actually did really well, way better than I thought it would do. So a lot of y'all have asked me to come back and make some more tutorials. So here we are, I've got my laptop ready, I've got my ca new camera set up, um, and I'm really excited. I hope everyone had a happy holidays, I'm currently filming this on Boxing Day. Um, but I hope everybody had a Merry Christmas. So I'm going to be showing you how to make a crown. So this can be any crown in general. If you need an example, check out my horses in the back Snapchat filter. Or any of my hearts lenses or anything like that. Those are pretty much what a crown is lens wise. So this should only take a few minutes. This is a very basic tutorial. Just like blushes, this is something you can really hone to your own taste and your own creativity. So I'm really excited to see what y'all do with this. Um, if you make any lenses using this tutorial, I would love to see them. Um, go ahead and link them in the comments if you make something with it. And hopefully this helps. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. You can always send me an email. My email is in the description. I answer them relatively quickly. Or you can leave a comment. Um, I might miss it though, but if you send me an email, I will not miss it. So without further ado, let's get into this. Also my last video did really well and I'm kind of confused, but YouTube kind of liked it. So like, kind of crazy. Alrighty guys, so the first thing you're going to want to do to create a crown is you are going to want to find an image that you want to use. So in this instance, I'm going to be making a buffering crown. And this will be kind of, it won't be a crown per se, so it won't be like words or anything. But you can pretty much use any image that you'd like. What I recommend is if you like to make these things on your phone is to just download the app Fonto. Download some fonts and then download an app like Superimpose which allows you to edit out the background. And then import it onto your computer and then you can have a custom background. So that's what I do usually. However, it is the same concept, it just is whatever image you choose. So in this instance, I am using a GIF of a buffering Wi-Fi signal. I thought this was kind of funny, and I think a lot of people will like it. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to save the image as, and I'm going to save it as the buffering GIF, buffering, and I'm just going to simply save it to my desktop, save. So the next thing that I'm going to want to do is I'm going to open Lens Studio. And I have finally updated to the latest version of Lens Studio. So if you're not running the same version of Lens Studio as me, it might be slightly different, but it still should be the same concepts. So now we are just going to open a new project. And for this new project, we are going to want to just got to let it load for a second. So we go over to the objects panel, we click add new, and we scroll down, so we scroll down, all the way to face effects, and then from face effects we're going to click face image, and there we go. So once we click face image, we should have a little picture come up on this beautiful lady's face. And what we're going to want to do is over in the inspector panel, we're going to want to change the texture where you are going to be importing the buffering logo. And to import, I know a lot of y'all had questions on how you import. All you have to do to import is simply go and find the image that you imported or that you want to use and simply click and drag it into the this panel that should pop up. So there we go and now we just press OK and there you have it. Our buffering symbol has loaded. <laughs> That's such an oxymoron, our buffering symbol has loaded. So the next thing that we're going to do is we are going to mess around with the blending modes. You know, that doesn't look as good as I thought it would. Instead of it being right there, we're just going to make a giant one. And it's going to go over her whole entire face. There we go. It's a little bit odd, but it works for the sake of this demonstration. So if you want to... Um, move around 
the scene panel. So this is what this is called. This is called the scene panel. All you have to do is use two fingers to zoom in and out and that way you can drag and expand your image a little bit more. So I think that kind of looks like her face is buffering and I kind of dig it, you know? So we're just going to leave that as it is and then we are simply going to go to head binding and see how the face index is zero. This is where it gets a little bit different to face mask. However, both kind of the same concepts, so it should work the same. So we are simply going to go to the head binding in the objects panel, select it, select image one as well. So we just select head binding one and image one and we duplicate. So the next thing that we want to do is we want to change the face index to one. That way another person can use this lens as well. So you and your friend can both be buffering. Now, the next thing that we want to do is just double check and make sure that the image is all good, has all the same details, which it should, because we duplicated it. Next thing we want to do is if you want to have any retouching or any post effect, you can go and go do that now. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be adding a retouch for two faces. and. And in order to do this, we go over to the objects panel, we press add new, we scroll down until we see face retouch. We click it, and then over in the inspector, we are able to change how much or how little we want the face to be retouched. And then we copy, paste, and we change the face index to one, that way it works for two people. That's a little bit confusing, I understand that. but. If you think about it, all it is is subtract one, and that's how many you have. So now I'm going to be adding a post effect to this crown. You don't have to. It's completely optional. Everything in this is optional and up to your creativity. That's your only limit is your creativity. So in this lens, I'm going to be adding a post effect or a color correction. And so in the objects panel, I'm scrolling down under general. It shows up under general and I'm going to post effects and I'm pressing color correction. Now it comes up with the standard color correction beauty and I'm going to be changing that texture to a texture that, that I made last night and you can actually access these on my profile now so go check those out. I'm just going to be adding all of those really quickly and then I'm pretty sure it's, no it's not that one i make sure I have the right one. It is this one. So I'm going to add this one just so everybody gets a little nice glow. And there we have it. Now for my project info, I'm simply going to name it Buffering Error. Oops. So I'm simply going to name this Buffering. And I can have a lens icon if I choose. So for the lens icon, I unfortunately cannot use the GIF, mostly because it is a GIF, so it's not supported. But, um, I'm just not going to have an icon, mostly because this is just a tutorial. But if you want a nice way to make icons, you can download the app Fonto, and you can make icons that way. That's what I use. And if you want to download fonts, I use dafont.com, and that will also be linked down below. So this is buffering and if you want to save a lens preview you just go into the lower right hand corner and press capture screenshot and it should pop up and I'm just going to name that buffering. There we go. And then we go to publish the lens. <laughs> and then we go to publish the lens and when we go to publish the lens we're just going to add some tags. So I'm going to say buffering. Oops. I'm going to say buffering funny Wi-Fi fun laugh. I don't know. Um, and there we go. And then for the preview, we are simply going to go to our where go to wherever we saved our screenshot. Mine always saves in my downloads. And we're just going to press open. And most likely it will not be approved right off the bat. So we just press done and we press submit. And that's how you do it.
Alrighty guys, so there you have it. That is how you make a crown lens on Snapchat. If you have any questions, any concerns, feel free to let me know. I will do my best to answer them. Um, go ahead and leave a like and a comment. Let me know what your favorite lens is that I've made. Um, and if you make a lens using this tutorial, feel free to send me the link. I love seeing them. I love seeing what you'll make. And I'm so excited to see what you'll come up with. Um, if you have any requests for tutorials, anything more complicated, you let me know. I'll do my best to figure something out. And if you have any specific requests for lenses or want me to make you a lens, just send me an email and we can talk the details. I'm so excited. Thank you so much for watching my videos. And go ahead and check out my other tutorials as well. Alrighty guys, bye! <laughs>